Hello everyone. Duped into idolatry. I used to believe in the Trinity. <clears throat> I was raised to believe in the Trinity. That is until I started to actually check the facts, the scriptural facts. And after turning over one stone after another, all I found was corruption. And I had to come to realize that I had been duped, deceived, into serving an idol. God is the main character of the Bible. He's the main character, and he's mentioned thousands of times. The one true God is mentioned thousands of times. Old Testament and New Testament. Now, don't you think it's a bit strange that you can't find a single mention of this three-person God mentioned anywhere in the entire scriptures. If that doesn't make you pause, I don't know what will. And this isn't about that argument where people say, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. That's not the point. This God is not mentioned anywhere in the scriptures. Nowhere. So you know what you're supposed to do? Pretend. Wherever you think you can get away with it, in Trinity world, you pretend that this is the three-person God. You pretend it in this verse, you pretend it in that verse. Our God is the living God, the living God, the true and living God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need to pretend anything with the living God. But that's how it works in Trinity world. You buy into this deception, and then you begin deceiving yourself into believing the Trinity God is mentioned here, the Trinity God is mentioned there, although there's no reason to do that. You just pretend. You ever wonder where this God came from? You know, there's a guy in the second century, near the end of the second century, named Irenaeus. He wrote a vo five-volume work against the Gnostics. Big, big document. And his main argument against the Gnostics was the true identity of the one God. That was his main argument against them. Guess how many times he mentioned the Trinity? Never. Don't you find that a bit strange? So you pretend. So you go to Matthew 20, 18, you count one, two, three, and you somehow pretend that this amounts to a single three-person God when there's no reason to do so. You just go right ahead and do it. You see what this man-made idol causes you to do? It causes you to resort to insane behavior. Insane. Counting one, two, three does not amount to a three-person God. You know, you count three humans, does that amount to a triune human? No. 
Where did this God come from? If you just use your head a little tiny bit, you'll realize that this God was fabricated in the imaginations of men. It's the product of the minds of men. The living God is not the product of the minds of men. The triune God is. You ask them why they believe in this triune God and they'll give you their little reasoning process. And that's because their God is manufactured in their own minds. It's the product of their own reasoning. They think, well, if I take my interpretation of this verse and my interpretation of that verse out of the oven, out of the furnace, comes this three-person God. Just stop and think about how insane that is. This is your God, the product of human reasoning. Because that's really what it is. And that's why you can't find this God mentioned anywhere in the scriptures. Nowhere. The only God of the scriptures is the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And his God was no trinity. The one God of scripture is Jesus Christ's God. God the Father. People read that account of the Israelites after they had crossed the Red Sea and, you know, the pillar of cloud went before them and God delivered them out of Egypt. And then when Moses is up on the mountain, Aaron and the boys make a golden calf to worship and serve. And we all read that story and we wonder to the, ourselves how they could be that dense. How could you be that stupid? Your God, the living God, just delivered you out of Egypt. And now you're going to make a calf, a golden calf, a molten calf out of metal, and worship and serve it. What is wrong with you? That's what everybody thinks, right? But in their pride, nobody thinks that they're doing the same thing when they are duped into idolatry, duped into serving a man-made God. There's only one God, the living God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet men run after this idol manufactured by men and they refuse to believe it's an idol. I mean, how could you be so deceived? People wonder, well, what do I do with this verse and that verse? Well, what I found out is it's a big pile of corruption. Manuscript corruption, translation corruption, and they do some pretty sneaky things with translation, let me tell you. Interpretations that, they're, they're just ridiculous. It's like people can't read or something. That's what idolatry does to you. Idolatries, or idols, pardon me, idols have no brain. They can't hear, they can't speak, and those who worship them become like them. The Bible says so. So when Jesus says, I and the Father are one, oh, Jesus is just declaring that he and the Father are one divine Uzziah. No, he didn't. What is wrong with you if you read the Bible that way? He said nothing like that, and he prayed for his disciples to be one, with him and the Father, just as we are one. He's praying this to the Father. 
And time and time again, this is what you find. Trinity World does not have a big, big pile of evidence. They have a very big pile of corruption. And this corruption seems to work well for them for one simple reason. Do you ever have a great big ball of string that's in a big ball of knots? Do you ever have something like that? Do you ever sit down and untie every single knot in that big ball of knots? You don't really want to bother with it, do you? That's what they've got. This big ball of knots. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. People don't want to bother trying to untie all these knots so they can see the straight line of truth. So they don't. They just continue in their idolatry, deceived into idolatry, and they pretend for themselves they're not committing idolatry. And they pretend for themselves that this triune God, which is never mentioned in the scriptures, is in fact the God of the scriptures. Talk about insanity. Insanity. And then if you should show someone why the logic of the Trinity doesn't work, you'll get, wow, it's a mystery. Three persons, one nature. What does that tell you? Nothing. Three humans have one human nature. Three human persons, one nature. That doesn't make them a triune being, does it? But that's what they keep fixating on. Three persons, one nature. It doesn't say anything. The problem is what the rest of their doctrine says. Three he's are one he. This triune being is one he. So you have three he's who are one he. Three he's equals one. Three equals one. It's insane. And there are many ways, many ways to show how this logic, so-called logic of the Trinity, doesn't work. And that's why they keep reverting back to three persons, one nature. That works because you have three human persons, one nature, but it doesn't say anything. It doesn't prove anything, but it's good enough to fool people. So you tell them and you show them how it all results in a fallacy of equivocation, basically. And you show them why their logic doesn't work. And they'll go, well, it's just a mystery. Really. Your three-person God is a mystery. How God can be three is a mystery. And one is a mystery. No, that's not a mystery, first of all. Three musicians, one band. It's not a mystery. Explain to me how three he's are one he. Now, that would be a mystery. And when you start getting into why their logic doesn't work, they try to pull this mystery card, which is also insane, because their God is the product of their own reasoning. So the conclusion to their own reasoning is an unfathomable, incomprehensible mystery. Like if I said 1 plus 3 is 247, and you say to me, that doesn't make sense, and I go, well, it doesn't have to. It's a mystery. It's a divine mystery. What they're doing is really that stupid, that crazy, that insane. That's what's going on. If you think it through, if you check the facts, you won't be an idolater for long, a Trinitarian idolater, if you're honest with yourself. If you're a person that is, can be honest with yourself and you check out these facts, the real facts of scripture, you'll realize it's a big fat lie, the Trinity. 
But that's the problem. There are people out there, many people, who don't care about the facts. They only care about one thing, confirmation bias. They want to believe their triune God idol is true. A true God. And they don't want to hear about facts. And if you should present the facts, they'll try to spin the facts. That's just another form of insanity. When the truth is stares you in the face and you don't like it so you reject it rejecting truth is a form of insanity because it means you're going to go off into a delusion instead of accepting the facts we might not always like the truth when we first see it and that's how these people start they decide what they want to be true first. That's not what truth seekers do. Truth seekers set out to find the truth because they know they can't make it. Truth is not something you can make. You can't make one plus one equals three. You can't. You're delusional if you think you can do that. You have to find out what one plus one equals. You have to discover truth. You have to go find it. And when you set out to find it, when you find it, it might not be something you like at first. Mm, I don't know if I like that very much. But if you're an honest truth seeker, you'll accept it. And one thing I found out about that is the reward is great. Great. People play all kinds of head games out there. You'll probably see a whole bunch of them below this video down in the comments section. And I make sure I leave them there. Some people don't like comments under their videos. You know how some of those people are. But I like to see this on record so that people can witness this for themselves. People are duped into idolatry. Don't think that you're so clever that you can easily spot the trickery of the devil. He's the master of illusion. People can't even figure out how magicians do their tricks down at the Las Vegas hotel. Oh, but you think you're gonna you're gonna spot the devil's schemes just like that right you're so clever you're not anywhere near that clever nowhere near it that's why you need the spirit of truth to guide you into all the truth and the spirit of truth leads us to worship and serve Jesus Christ's God. Paul said, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. When you're a true believer, a true follower of Jesus, you surrender your life over to Jesus Christ to let him take over your life. Who is his God? If you no longer live, but it's Christ living in you, who is his God? It's pretty simple, folks. If you want to be an idolater, have at her. There's idolaters all over India with all kinds of idols. There's idolaters of all kinds all around the world. And you'll just be another one among them without any victory in Jesus Christ. May God open your eyes.